I self-funded and started an international handbag brand at 21 years old while living in Milan, Italy, and this is how I did it. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Vogel, the founder and designer at Vogel, and welcome to my channel. But before I get into the backstory of how I started this brand, I kind of just want to show the bags first. Um, you might recognize them from Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook possibly, or maybe even YouTube. I launched Vogel in February of 2020, which means we are coming up on a year of Vogel. And what a year it has been. Um, I am so grateful for how fast this business has grown. I truly never anticipated the traction it would get and how much all of you would be supporting the brand I'm so grateful okay so let's get into it so in February of 2020 I launched the original collection these bags are a staple to the brand they're never gonna go away and they sell really well to pretty much every age group which is great and I designed these bags myself which I will get into but it comes in black camel which I love the camel it's not too brown it's not too light it's like the perfect year-round shade and then I have white this bag sells like crazy. Everybody wants this bag. Every time I restock it, it sells out so fast. And I almost didn't even make a white bag because everyone was like, don't make a white bag. It might get too dirty. People might not buy that. And so this is the logo. And everything Vogel thus far has gold detailing, gold hardware, gold printing, gold zipper. So that's the zipper on that one. And all of the bags have black interior lining and then they have a genuine leather made in Italy branded tag inside um, with gold printing and it's the same leather that's on the outside so black Saffiano, camel Saffiano, and white Saffiano. and then all of the bags also have this interior um, pocket right here as well so I love these bags I'm so proud of them and this was actually the first prototype that I approved yeah these three are the backbone of the collection and they are not going anywhere. So this is how they look on, um, super minimal, super chic. And I love that they go with everything, like all three of these bags I could wear with this outfit. And that's kind of what I noticed with pretty much every outfit is that they all work really well with it. And then the white, I mean, I wear my white bag all the time. It's so, so cute and it just pops with every single outfit. This bag I've had for over a year and wear all the time, and then these two are new. Once you have the bags for a while, the leather really gives and loosens up, which is really nice because it's not so rounded on your shoulder once you wear them after a while. Um, it really gives and hangs nicely, if that makes sense. And then at the end of April of 2020, I launched the Summer Capsule Bag. So I used a softer leather texture for this and it's a very light washed out pink with the gold detailing, it's so pretty. And this bag sold out within a few weeks. It was really great launching this at the end of April because a lot of people bought this as a Mother's Day gift. Um, because like I said, the bags really do sell to every age group, which is fabulous. And then I also at the same time launched the card holder collection. These are the little card holders and they all say genuine leather made in Italy imprinted on the back. And there's three card slots on each side and then a little cash sleeve as well. And they're the exact same color and texture as the original collection and they fit perfectly in the bags. At the end of July, I launched the chain collection and it's actually the exact same bag and strap length. I really wanted to make a new bag that was a little more edgy and flashy but still very similar to their original collection. So I have black, green, and red. And these bags go with everything, which is so nice. And I really think that these were such a great addition to Vogel because they attracted um, that customer that really wanted the high quality shoulder bag, but wanted something a little more flashy and edgy. And same thing with these, everything is gold hardware and Italian Saffiano leather. And they're all handmade in Milan, Italy by the same team. 
And then they have the interior made in Italy um, genuine leather tag and the little secret pocket right there. So Vogel is based in Denver, Colorado. I'm from here, I grew up here. I went to school at CU Boulder and I design everything here and then import them from Milan, Italy. I was living in Milan in 2019 when I started noticing that shoulder bags were just starting to have their moment and become a style. And at that point, I fell in love with them and I thought it would be a good idea to invest in that style. I'm sure all of you guys have seen shoulder bags literally everywhere and thank goodness because that is my brand. I wanted Vogel to be chic and minimal and ageless and timeless. I really think that that has been communicated and achieved in the bags and the design and the quality. I really tried to create my collections at the most affordable price possible. It is not cheap making Italian handbags and importing them and you know, doing all of that, but I try to keep my margins as reasonable as possible so that you guys can enjoy the quality at a lower price. If you compare other bags of the same quality and size, they are at least double the price. And once everything starts going back to normal, which hopefully is soon, um, I plan on bringing you guys to Italy with me um, to pick up the bags and shoot some content. So that'll be really exciting. I've always wanted to have my own business and be an entrepreneur. I think a lot of that motivation and drive comes from my back. Background. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, and when I was 13, I was actually scouted by a modeling agent at a Walgreens in my hometown, and she, I was just shopping with a friend, and she came up to me and was like, have you ever considered modeling? And I was like, no, <laughs> never. And then she gave me her information, and I brought that home to my mom and brought it up with her. And then next thing I knew, I was out in Hollywood Hills shooting with that agency. And then I came back to Denver and signed with an agency here so I could have a strong home base. And I really spent um, the majority of my high school years trying to make something happen with that. I was never a huge model by any means, but actually ended up living in Mexico City for a little bit in 2016. And that experience in itself completely changed me as a person. I was navigating the city at 17 years old that I had never been to, and I was getting myself to jobs and I was working with companies all over the country and had the biggest culture shock of my entire life. But from that experience, I fell madly in love with traveling and seeing new places and meeting new people who were just so ambitious and creative and had that entrepreneurial spirit. And from meeting people like that and hearing their stories and kind of picking their brains, I realized that it's not impossible for me to have that idea and have a business of my own at some point as well. Um, I never thought it would be handbags and I think that traveling is the reason that I have this brand. I would not have Vogel and I would not have my manufacturer and I wouldn't have taken this risk if I hadn't taken risks while traveling. So after Mexico City, I went to CU Boulder and I studied finance and marketing and that was the best four years of my entire life. CU Boulder is one of the prettiest campuses I've ever seen, if not the prettiest. Um, maybe I'm biased. I went to the business school there and they had a really strong emphasis on international business, which I loved, and I really took advantage of that. So freshman year, I took an elective marketing course where we learned how to market the Made in Italy product attribute and the undeniable quality that is unmatched when you buy something that is made in Italy. The Vogel collections are of the highest quality and I'm so proud of that. That was one of my main uh, sticking points when I was making this collection and starting this brand was if I don't like the quality, I'm not even gonna do it. I'm not gonna charge people for something that's not high quality. So with that class, we actually went to Milan over spring break that semester and that was my first time to Europe and my first time to Milan, obviously, and I fell in love with the city. I fell in love so much so that I decided to spend my study abroad semester in Milan at Bocconi University and that was in spring of 2019. I really had no intention of starting a business when I went to Milan <laughs> and here we are, but um, I just went there to travel and study and I was not in a study abroad program necessarily. I was more of an exchange student so I didn't have a huge group of CU kids that came with me or anything like that. There was one girl from my sorority that came with me and we had so much fun together. But um, it was a really independent exchange program and that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be on my own and independent and see as much as I could. After a small housing mishap in Milan, we ended up living in an Airbnb in the Navigli neighborhood. If you're ever in Milan, you need to go to Navigli and get drinks and dinner. Um, it's on this beautiful canal and there's live music and the vibe is just really great. So 
be sure to go there. The Nuvigli Canals, if you're looking at the city, are kind of on the south west side of the city that is where we lived and that is how i met my leather manufacturers but like i said i had no intention of starting a business at all but if you've ever been to italy you'll know that there are leather goods stores on every single block of the country so it's like locally made handmade stuff which is even better at the beginning of my semester i bought my first genuine italian handbag in the milan fashion district I was just living my best life wearing this pink bag around Italy and I loved, loved, loved this bag. I would put like a little scarf on it from the Florence leather market and be so chic. Um, so this was my first Italian handbag. And then a few months later, I bought this one from the Florence leather market, which I'm sure you can recognize from that if you've ever been there. And I loved that this was white, which is possibly why you see the white in the original collection. And it's Safiano leather as well. So that. This is what inspired me to use Safiano on the original collection. And I also wore this everywhere, which you can really tell if you look at it. So I'm glad the light is on it. So after these two bags, I fell in love with the handbag scene in Italy. So I started thinking maybe I could meet someone or network or learn more about the industry while I'm here. So we were living in the Airbnb in Navigli on the canal and in our the Airbnb was in an apartment building. So in our apartment building, we had a plaza in the middle like at most buildings do. In the little plaza, there was a motorcycle repair shop slash bar lounge. And it was super random. We lived on the ground floor, so our window literally would look into the lounge pretty much because there was like 10 feet between us and the bar and the guys that were working there started noticing that we were living next door and so then they would knock on our window and be like come have a beer come have drinks come have chips we slowly became friends with them and there was one day where i was over there by myself after class having chips with some of them and one of the guys was like, do you want a tour of our shop? No one's here, I'm happy to show you around. And I was like, yeah, sure. So they took me inside and they showed me the motorcycle repair shop first, which was exactly what you'd expect it to be. And then we went over into the bar lounge, which was really cool. I'd been in there a few times. And then as you go upstairs, there was like a loft upstairs. And we went up there and they had a rack of really cool, unique leather jackets. And my wheels were already kind of turning from this. So when he showed me the jackets, I was like, oh, are you guys making these or are you buying them? And he said that they buy most of them, but they make some of them or repair some of them or add patches with the remaining leather that they have from repairing the motorcycle seats downstairs. So then I asked him where they get that leather and I was just asking a bunch of questions, probably being a little bit annoying. <laughs> and he said, well, we're going to pick up an order from our leather guy in a few days. Do you want to come with me? And so I said yes to that. And a few days later, they picked me up and I rode with them to the north part of the city, kind of by the castle. And we went to like another apartment building. We went down these narrow stairs and then it opened up into a studio apartment. And it's probably nothing to a lot of people, but it was heaven for me because the guy literally had his mattress on the floor, a nightstand, a few blankets, and then just leather and fabric and magazines and finished products that he made hung up on the wall. Like it was so cool. So they exchanged their order and then he gave me like a big brochure that had all these leather swatches inside and there was a WhatsApp telephone number on there and he said, go ahead and contact that guy. I'm sure he would be really helpful or love to meet you. Um, so then from that, I really started networking in Milan and I spent probably about a full month meeting with people and networking. I would WhatsApp that guy, meet him in the fashion district of Milan, and then he would give me a few contacts. So I was just networking that way. And everybody was seriously so nice and so helpful. After I had spent a while networking, I kind of realized that this might not be super realistic. I wasn't necessarily meeting any handbag manufacturers. I was just meeting leather suppliers who could supply a huge roll of leather, um, but they couldn't put it together and sew in the lining and get the zipper and stamp the logo and get the hardware. So, and I only had like three weeks left at this point, probably less even, and I was realizing this might not be super realistic, but I did learn a lot and I'm so grateful for that. So I kind of abandoned ship and just bookmarked it and thought, okay, this was a great experience. I learned so much. I met so many people, but it's probably not going to happen for me. And it was seriously three days before I went back to the United States. My first contact 
messaged me on whatsapp and said i have one more guy that's actually a handbag manufacturer he's willing to meet you he can assemble the whole bag for you are you willing to go so I went and met him, and he's now my current manufacturer. That's who makes all of these beautiful bags. He produces for really large brands around Italy and around the world, and he said that he saw something in me and was willing to take me on as a client, which was just so fabulous. But I really think that meeting my manufacturer in person solidified our business relationship on a level that I don't think ever could have happened if I found him online, um, which I realized I was just in the right place at the right time and I'm super grateful for that and feel so lucky. And that's a, that's the kind of the thing is I think that Vogel is a mixture of being in the right place at the right time and luck and also years of hard work on my end. I'm just really humbled and honored that he was willing to take me on as such a small client because I still am a very small client. So when I met my current manufacturer, I told him that I really wanted to design my own bag. If I was gonna start a collection and go all in on this, I wanted it to be my own design. And I knew that I wanted to make a shoulder bag as well. So he said, I'm happy to do the prototyping for you. In fact, I'd rather do it because then it's easier to just put it into production. So if you can send me some designs, I'll get it started. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the saying, fake it till you make it, and that's exactly what I did. I was like, yep, perfect, no problem. I'll get that over to you immediately, thank you. So about three days later, I flew home to Colorado and I just started ordering cheap shoulder bags on Amazon and ASOS just to see what I liked. And I was wearing them around all summer. And I actually took a few of those bags that I bought and like cut them up to see how they were made because I truly had no idea what I was doing. And then one day that summer in Boulder, I just sat down and drew out my first design on notebook paper. And I had all the dimensions and details and I marched over to UPS and I packaged up my drawing. I mailed that little package over to Italy. And my manufacturer WhatsApp me a few days later and said, I got your design, I'll start working on it ASAP. So I'm like, okay, okay, let's see what happens. And then this is my first prototype. So it's the exact, I didn't change anything about the bag measurements. The bag is the same, but the logo is huge, which is how I drew it. So that was a learning, a learning step. And this, um, obviously. I wore this bag everywhere, okay. Yeah, this bag was my first prototype, and then I made some edits, and I this was my second prototype, which now is in production and is the original shoulder bag. So I really only um, shrunk the logo and added the Milano to the logo, and then obviously I fixed the zipper right here instead of being that long. Which I don't know if you can really tell, but it's a big difference. It's a big difference, you guys, okay? And this was the prototype that I approved and sent into production, like I said before. And actually, what's funny about this is, so I was doing all this prototyping during the fall of my senior year. So actually, when I fixed the logo, I went to my school library and I typed the logo out in Word and I added Milano to it and I printed it at the school printer and cut it. And I have a picture of it, I'll put it up. And I taped that to this bag and just sent it to him like I sent a photo of it and the dimensions of it and that's how we fixed the logo that's how we changed it so a little fun fact then once I approved this prototype I placed an order for this the camel and the white um, and that was expensive so that gets into the self-funding part of the business um, I like I said had modeled a lot growing up and then I was still modeling occasionally in college so I did have a good amount of savings from that also from sophomore year of college on I worked at Nordstrom that is how I saved up enough money to pay for all of this once I placed the order for all the bags I picked up so many hours at Nordstrom I was working non-stop I would go to class at 9 in the morning get done at 12 30 or 12 15 drive to Nordstrom, clock in at 1, and go home at 9.45. Which honestly did kind of suck sometimes, but I would have to just refocus and remind myself what I was doing this for and the payoff that hopefully would come with it. Working at Nordstrom helped me, of course, financially, but it also helped me grow as a businesswoman. I was going to Nordstrom every day building a business and working with clients and following up with them after they shopped with me and 
providing the best customer service that I could, working to fit their needs, seeing what they were shopping for. And I think if you listen to any interview of an entrepreneur or podcast or anything like that, you'll see that they all, all the fashion entrepreneurs have spent time on the sales floor. And I really think that that's so crucial to having a successful brand at all in any aspect. You learn that customer service is invaluable. It was like a three year crash course about the fashion industry and all the different brands and working with different customers. I'd work with 20 year olds, I'd work with 65 year olds. So I really did learn how to talk to any adult, any person. And that has been so, so crucial to building the foundational layer of Vogel in this past year. I worked all the time. I saved pretty much all of my money. I wired it over to Italy and then that's how I self-funded the first round. I've been bootstrapping the rest of it ever since. And I'm just really proud of that. I mean, it was a huge risk. I spent my entire savings account. I wiped it clean, um, but obviously the payoff has been beyond all of my expectations. Three collections in one year is crazy. For the first round of the collection, I actually flew to Italy to pick them up. Um, I didn't import them because I wanted to build that relationship with my manufacturer and make sure that I was expressing how serious I am about this. So I flew there with my dad in January of 2020 and we picked up the first round of the bags um, in empty suitcases. So my manufacturer picked us up from our hotel and took us to the showroom and all the bags were sitting on this couch. And I was like, that was the first time I had seen them all in person, the full quantity. And I was like, what am I doing? I am way in over my head. Um, so I had a moment of just sheer panic in the showroom. And um, my dad and I drove south to Florence and Tuscany and made a trip out of it and shot the collection. Um, so those are the only photos I have of the bags in Italy. But like I said, hoping I can go back soon and bring you guys with me. I think the scariest part of starting any business is starting it, truly. I still think that that's the scariest part of what I've done so far is just starting it and kind of not caring what people are gonna think. It really took just like risk and overcoming that fear of judgment and failure, but it has been the best journey ever. I think that having Vogel this year was so great because it allowed me to connect with customers nationwide and worldwide who I still haven't even met before. Um, there's so many of you that we like chat every now and then because you bought a bag and you loved it or you haven't bought one yet, but you really want to and you love following the account. And it's still so crazy to me when I see someone I don't know like wearing a bag on Instagram or I haven't yet in person seen someone just like wearing a Vogel, but my friends have. So if you ever see a Vogel in the wild, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. So far, Vogel has been featured in 5280 Magazine, 303 Magazine, Cherry Creek Fashion, Colorado Home and Lifestyles, Her Campus, and me and my red chain bag were featured in Denver Life Magazine, um, the cover of the style section, which was super exciting. Thank you guys so, so much for everything in this past year, and I cannot wait to see what 2021 brings. And be sure to follow on Instagram, and I'm always available at my email if you wanna reach out. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe below, and I'll see you guys next time.